in banks and what we read about in the yes, the Kenyan Society still exists. It's a Christmas club for collecting money, but it's still there. It's safe, Martin, and pretty. Um, there's the annual war. There are other places which still do it. So yes, it's still Kenyan Society is still alive. Um, I keep coming across friendly societies in the sense oh, Margaret and I went to see a house which her grandmother had uh, run a maternity home from and it was bought with a mortgage from the something or other district of the Manchester uh, the Lion and Sons, Old Fellows, whatever it was and so on. It went over the title of this organisation was two lines long and he thought, well, hand out to the end of a thousand pounds to buy a house. But, uh, um, but that's the way it was um, in 1930. Yes, it kind of words changed a lot in the meantime. Yes, um, still. Yeah. Well, the Friendly Societies um, did their annual walk on their annual club day. Um, very often the Morris, like in the Cotswold, was invited to provide the entertainment. Um, certainly, um, uh, Cheeky was his son Bobby told us about occasionally dance um, at friendly societies and so on uh, between the wars. So, yes, there's a, a common account. But then, um, yeah, I read a book written by a little curator at the Red Rural Life Museum, which has got its own collection of um, stave heads. Now, the stave heads um, I only remark in the West Country because they're all bought from Bristol uh, with Hadley's own brass uh, system. Um, and therefore the idea was that each club would design its own stable and so on. Um, and that made a big collector's item. Having said that, when I got interested it so long ago, you could buy them like five pounds a head in an antiquarian. I'm not quite sure what they're going very fast. I know one of the things that was wrong persuading Somerset Morris to actually get their own set of originals. They don't have to be shown. Yeah, we've got 24 now. Yeah, so these have a real problem. But um, yeah. The idea anyhow is to um, over the day is to those people who it might be interested in the day say that format, which I don't know if it's just um, North Dorset and Somerset, uh, where they dance on the stage only because they put them down and got stolen. You know, um, it really starts a connection the line. And I did find, um, you go to the county record office and go through the Friendly Society records, which are normally deposited there. The um, Friendly Society, Headquarters in London is a government department and uh, runs mortgages and things of that sort. And he isn't interested in local friendly society. If you send your records to them, they dump it on the county authority. So I was going through these looking for statements of their costumes to discover nearly everybody wore blue cockade on the hat, a blue sash. Why blue? It was the cheapest dye, it was easily available at the time. Uh, so it wasn't a great thing, but it was fine news. Uh, uh, somebody sent me a newspaper cutting for Buckthorn Weston about a wedding reel. And when they put it and crossed over and danced the figure at the wedding, a rain for Brian Reel. With a little bit of research, I discovered what that was intended to mean. Then I found this first and second parts at Sturt and Cornwall. Sturt and Campbell is the local's name. Um, and I had the pleasure of teaching those dancers to um, the local song at Stenbridge. Um, the weather forecast was it was going to snow, so we thought we could drive down there and the workshop was stopped when it started to snow, and in the normal season we could keep ahead of it, driving ahead of it. Nothing was further than the truth. The snow came rolled up like a blizzard. And we were 20 minutes getting the half a mile to the haze where we were staying. And although the workshop was on the Saturday, we left on Monday. No, I never forget that. So, aside from the Buddha's side, it portion, Bomba, 
Somers, Bath City, Somerset. There are a few sites who actually um, include the local dancers or typically look at or in, the, in their repertoire. And have since enjoyed the style and uh, made dances of their own in the sort of style. The great advantage is that when you've invested in a set of eight or ten spheres, as you were, um, you can't just shove them in a cupboard, you've got to use them. That's how they keep them A minority sport. But if people are interested in learning something about it, the friendly societies, um, somebody's going to give a talk for an hour or so, uh, somebody's going to have us to bring them his display. He's got about 250 statelets, brass statelets, and he keeps in a bedroom in a multi drawer display cabinet, and they weigh over a ton. <laughs> You know, and on a bedroom floor, and I look to see the book, floor and bandit, and so on. Um, could be quite a very interesting day, very interesting people. So, um, if you, Barbara's got the details, um, can you book it, and so on. They've got tickets um, as well. Accommodation and all that sort of thing, if you're interested. Uh, it is depending on whether you want something different or not. Um, there was a big move, you see, when. The women started dancing in 75. Um, there was a lot of seasonal dance, or, um, dancing, as it were, which wasn't social dancing, unused. So the first thing to make it women dancing was important. It was offloading all this unused material onto the women to discover what in fact was a woman as well as dance. And it turns out it's everybody else as well as dance. I think I've said to many people, Think of, when I started Morris, it never occurred to me that we would like to do Morris. I thought we were far too sensible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why would they want to be aimed like Morris dancers, like Morris men? Be aimed. The answer is they do. You know, there's nothing. Oh, there is a difference between Mor Morris women and Morris men that I've noticed over the years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not talking about you, man. <laughs> With men's sides, they spend all week working. So when it comes to Morris practice, on the whole, they dress up a bit and they come, they worry about their image and they come and lay it on a bit thick. Never noticed the women that. spend all week worrying about their image and they're only too glad to relax and get on the Morris practice and not have to be worried about their image and actually themselves. <laughs> and really, when it comes to teaching and organising something, there is a marked a mark difference between the two organisations. When it comes to mixed science, of course, it depends on which science dominant. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can think of some science I've enjoyed, um, like the one in the Harrow area, Rose. Um, I think last time I spoke, she raised five sides and four kicked her egg. <laughs> she was too demanding. But so on, oh, for that matter, it was the women's side in the Harrow area, um, which still go. Um, couldn't make up his mind whether they were a team for dancing, a team for dancing, or a club, or what. And they split. And split. Some went up to Cheshire, um, and they split, and they split, and so on. And that kept so dividing until. Um, there's a women's side that believes in dancing here, there's a women's side out there that believes in just dancing on club night. And so on, you know, they had different philosophies as well. Fortunately enough, Morris dances up there to spare. Yeah, so here we go. I am very sorry for people like the uh, women's side on Guernsey who have to roll all these in one week. You know, you have to solve from club dancing through the northwest to wrap it all in the same box. Uh, well, there's nothing else to do on going to man. You end up having a different sort of conversation with them. <laughs> Their attitude. It all goes to all paint all sorts of men. Yeah, um, I suppose I got involved with Tammy Reynolds' um, National Folk Group, whenever that was, late 60s, something like that. Um, we got stuck on the same tour and so on. Um, and he got me to go to Albert's Eater Town 
you know, could suddenly realise that there was nothing going on in the UK up there at Albert Hall weekend. So he started something at Bath University. I got involved in the university for some years, um, rather fun. That got me involved with the Bath City women. Um, when that was dying down, I was approached by um, Fleur de Lille. They Fleur de Lille had been running one year, and then the squire and the man who was teaching the Morris eloped together. So they were a bit lost what to do. Um, so I came along and played um, and had a very important time with them. Then Minden Rose, who were the wives, initially the wives of the Orton Morris men, wanted to do something different. Uh, so could I teach them some Cheshire and National Morris and Garland dances? So we had a great time with them. But um, they had a very good form and um, a very good band, so I didn't really have much reward than that. And then the fleet came along, their um, leader and teacher was moving off to Somerset. Um, so I came along to see what they do. Um, I've lived with them ever since, as it were. Um, I hope dead ease is around. I am, I'm hiding here. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you are, right. You're the longest serving member, I think. Probably, yes. yes. Yeah, I've forgotten how many years it is, but it's getting approaching half one more or Yeah, and I can say I'm eternally grateful, and I want to say it then, of those years and the friendship that the group grew up. We were grateful for you coming and trying out your choruses on us. Well, that's right, yes. <coughs> also, they were second to the guy I can introduce all sorts of dances to them as well. Um, and we've had a great time. We have, yeah. You know, yeah, guinea pigs, absolutely. Unfortunately, I'm physically unable to get to practice, yeah. so there's nothing I can do later. But I've had a great role with like, and this. As long as I can provide something useful, we will continue to do so as long as I can do it. Can I say, somebody must have a knife. Is it Sheffield City Colours? This is where I tell the story of Roy and Tubby came to my house. And Tub, we were having tea, and Tubby said, "Who wants a crust?" And so there were various members of Wins and Morris um, were there, and there was Roy, of course, and they all said, "Me!" And so Tubby cut the crust all the way round, gave everybody a crust, and there was a cube of white bread left on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I always had to be sure we could show them. Funny, I thought it was the other way around. Yeah, I'm sure that was so. And we ran it down to the Smiths in the streets of Swindon on the 100th anniversary of Custer's last dance. And we couldn't resist making you. It always started with that. We did dance tonight. Four lines, four to back, and grab your partner. Didn't take her off. And then there was an unusual dance of some sort. It was a wild. And then there was a completion dance. So, whatever program you chose, and if you were doing it on the show, you'd have to put two of them together. The audience would get a good cheap dance, <laughs> stick dance, and that's the always one that's corner of us. Yeah, oh yeah, but the things like You were complaining about the toast. They're going to do one after another, actually looking back at the same.